Hi, my name is Nick Burnham and I'm down in the Hamble today for Motorboating Yachting looking at this Sea Lion F430 behind me. Now we've got one of those beautiful crisp clear winter days. It's the middle of December, we've had to scrape ice off the boat this morning but the sun's out, it's warming up nicely and we've got this for the whole day. We're going to head out into the Solent, do a bit of exploring and really try and get under the skin of this new model. So it's midday and we're just starting to lose the sun a little bit but we've got the photography done and the video and also had a drive of the boat and I found that actually it is a really simple easy driving experience because there's a couple of things firstly it's IPS so there's no outdrives to trim but also this boat's got auto trim tabs at one press and it controls the pitch of the boat and that's the nose up and down and then a second press and it's fully auto so it also corrects side by side so literally at the helm all you have to do is open the throttles and steer and the other thing that this boat has got is the throttles also will synchronise with each other so you don't have to fine tune it, you just set them pretty much where you want them and it, it levels them across the engines as well. Now we haven't got the most testing of conditions in far of actually assessing the sea keeping of the boat but in terms of the way that it drives it's great for assessing the performance and we found with this one she's doing about 31 knots flat out. Now it's worth remembering that this boat has got a heavy passerelle on the back, it's got a generator and it's also full of fuel so that's quite realistic testing conditions. They have seen 33 knots out of these when they're completely clean with no gear on board and that's a good speed because it means that you can drop the revs back and nice cruising speed on this is about 3000 rpm and that is actually, well that's two and a half there, two and a half thousand is just tickling onto the plane, three thousand is, it's just there and that's giving us about low 20, so about 22, 23 knots and there's a plenty left there, the maximum res is three and a half so you can still wind a bit more cruising speed out if you want to. And sat here the overriding impression is what a quiet boat it is, it's often the way with the IPS but those engines do sound really remote, all you can really hear is the noise of the water peeling past the hull and just a very gentle burble in the background of the exhaust, so it's a very relaxing boat to cruise on. Anyway, we're going to head for lunch in Cowes and then we're going to come out this afternoon and have another go with it. Well, the real beauty of boating in winter is the fact that this place is completely deserted. I've never seen cows so quiet. So we've got a nice berth, head off for a bit of lunch, and then we'll do a bit more boating this afternoon. So we've had a great lunch in cows. We've come out and done a bit of photography, and the weather is now doing what was forecast, which is greying right up and it's threatening to rain. So we've come down to the lower helm, and uh, we're driving back from here. And of course, this is the big advantage of this kind of boat. You've got the, uh, the sunshine, daylight upstairs, as we had this morning, and then this afternoon, it's a bit chillier, we've got the central heating on and this is definitely the place to be. Uh, in terms of the performance of the boat from down here, one of the things that's most noticeable is how quiet the boat is. 
and we've had some really low sound readings on here even when we've been running at full chat but again just like upstairs the nice cruising speed for this boat is at about 3000 rpm which obviously again is in the low to mid 20s and the visibility is great we've got those auto tabs on again that's keeping the nose down and the boat level and the visibility is fantastic it's big glass to the sides a big windscreen with no central mullion and one of the things i do like is this side door which does two things it means that when you're maneuvering of course you've got instant access out to the deck in fact you can stand on the side deck and reach the ips controller from there um, and also on a nice day you can have it open for a bit of connection but it does mean again you've got tremendous visibility from the helm out onto that side but uh, the overriding impression sat here it's a comfortable boat it's a quiet boat it's a good boat for covering distances but most of all it is a boat that you can drive from down here some boats you sit in a lower helm and you feel like you're craning and trying to look over the top this is a comfortable place to be and that makes this a really multi-purpose boat so we're back in port now and before it gets dark and the rain starts it's just time to give you a tour of this boat and we're starting up here on the flybridge because this is the crucial difference between the sea line c430 which actually is the boat next door and this new version which is the f430 that boat came out in 2017 it's got the flat roof and the big sliding section above the helm on this one which launched in 2018 you've got this big flybridge area and a nice thing about this is that you've got a huge seating area over on this side around the table and a double helm here but on the other side this seat here is quite adaptable so it starts off with a forward facing seating area so you can get four people across here all facing forward all enjoying the ride if you're at rest you can flip this forward and that gives you extra seating around the table and then finally you can actually fold this seat like that there's an infill that goes in here and that gives you a sunbathing area next to the helm now down here on the main deck it is pure c430 apart from these steps of course that's the big difference with the f430 and that means wide side decks you've got a slightly deeper and wider side deck on this side than that side but they're both very usable big cockpit area out here ahead of the swim platform and then as we go forward you've got the galley aft layout and they've put this window in here that lifts so that this connects directly so when you're in the galley you're catering just as well for this area as you are for the saloon forward and one thing i do particularly like on this boat it's an optional extra but as well as the fridge which is just here there's also a freezer that's been added so you've got massive space for your food if you're spending a bit of time on the boat that worked really well then ahead of me here of course you have got your saloon area now this has got big seating area on this side but what is nice is that the helm position on that side which traditionally takes up a fair bit of space you can actually swing that helm seat round by 90 degrees drop it down and that all becomes part of the saloon so it stops robbing that space and actually becomes something useful now on the lower deck there are two options this particular boat has got the twin cabin layout and what that means is a full beam cabin in the middle of the boat just here and then there's another cabin forward that's got scissor berth so they're two singles that swivel together to make into a double there's two heads as well so you've got day heads over here on the port side and that is accessed also from the mid cabin so they've got direct access into that and then the forward cabin has got its own ensuite but there is another layout option you can have that as a three cabin layout and rather usefully the boat next door the c430 has that layout so we're going to knit next door and i'll show you what that looks like as well So this is the C430 and the big difference with this of course is rather than the flybridge we've got the big glass panels in the ceiling and this whole forward section slides electrically. So that's your trade-off, that's what you get for not having the flybridge and going for the coupe version. This seat here of course this is what I was mentioning in the other boat and this is it in its lounge position so this gives you a tremendous seating area all around this area just here. The woodwork is different in this boat, this one's got the high gloss walnut and the boat that we're on just now has the high gloss chestnut in fact Warner to standard in a matte finish but these are upgrades that you can select but the real big difference and the reason i wanted to show you this boat is further down because as you go down these steps this all looks exactly the same but there's one major difference the fall cabin is very similar they put a double bed in this one rather than the scissor berths but what's changed is back here because where the other boat had a huge full beam cabin with a central double bed what they've done is they split it down the center and what that's given is a double berth on this side and two singles on that side although there is an infill to make that a double if you want so the boat is to all intents and purposes exactly the same but what you have here is a three cabin layout mm -hmm. 